Hi, everybody. Welcome. Thanks for joining us this week uh, on Wouldn't It Be Fun? Uh, this month, I am joined by my friend Erin Clayton. Erin is a knitwear designer, and she's also a graphic designer. And I was lucky enough to meet Erin last year at the Vogue Knitting Launchpad. Erin, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. And thanks to everyone joining us live here today. You'll have arrived muted and we'll just ask you to stay muted while I interview Aaron. But as we get to the end of our time, we will absolutely open up the floor for questions. I know that Aaron welcomes a little Q&A and that's always one of the most fun parts of the broadcast for me too. So. Erin, I know that you have a background both as a graphic designer and as a knitwear designer. Which of those came first? Can you tell us? Absolutely. Um, I've been a graphic designer for over 20 years. Um, and I feel like design has been in my blood since I was a little girl. I've always been designing things. And so when I learned to knit only six years ago, um, after a few years, I decided to try and design some things because there were things in the industry that like I was looking for that I couldn't find. So I created them. What sorts of things were those that you were inspired to create and couldn't find in, from other people? So I was looking for things that would fit into what I was wearing. Um, I had recently taken a class uh, called Style School and it talked about matching your, in, like what was inside you and your personality to what you wore. And so I had like revamped my, um, my wardrobe and I wasn't finding things that were gonna match up with that. Um, and so I started to create things that were easy to knit, um, engaging and very wearable. So these really are reflective of your personal style. Absolutely. Um, it's important to me that they're timeless too, um, so that they're not going to go out of style in a couple of years that I can continue to incorporate them in. That's great. The name of your design company, Erinine Designs, I know has to do with your background. Would you share about that with us? Absolutely. I would be happy to. So um, my name, Erinine Designs, is because of my Irish heritage. And so in the Gaelic or Irish language, when you add Ean to something, it means to make it little. And so my mom was born in Ireland and she lived there on a small farm until she was 16. And then she moved out here and lived with um, a couple of her sisters. And so her heritage was always such a big part of our family. And when I was a little girl, she would call me Erinine and she would call my brother, whose name is Sean, Shawnee. And so when I decided to like name my company, I really wanted to kind of pay homage to that. And my mom had passed away many years ago and this was a way for me to just keep her incorporated in everything that I did. Oh, that's wonderful. And do you feel like that, that connects her? Do you, do you feel like um, that, that, that you're still somehow maintaining or honoring that connection? I absolutely do. Um, I think that my mom was one of those people who was so, um, she was really good with color and the way things went together. And I really feel like I got that gift from her. So being able to kind of have her involved in the whole process just feels kind of special. And um, I just, I feel very connected to my Irish heritage and to my mom, so. And I know that you're, names, the naming conventions you use in your designs also really reflect back on that heritage, right? They do. Um, I name my patterns after towns around where my mom grew up. Um, and so when I first started, when I first started, it was easier because we kept having to go out as I got more designs. Um, but the first several of my designs, including the one that I'm wearing now, which is called the Gaula Shawl, um, is actually named after the tiny town that she was born in. And so when I um, name them, I name them after something that means something, either a town. Um, there's also uh, ones that are named after Gaelic, na Gaelic words. Um, that tie into the story of my heritage and my mom and her family. Um, but yeah, like I just really love being able to come up with this timeless kind of design and then um, 
figure out the, the names that kind of go with it. And um, there's a, one piece called the fee shawl, which means weaving in Irish, in Gaelic. And um, my grandfather was a, um, no, actually it was my mom's grandfather was the town weaver. So there just was kind of that, um, that tie in because of the texture in it looked like weaving and there was just, it just reminded me of that. So um, I love being able to weave that in. That's really nice. And how do you, um, how do you stay connected with some of these stories and some of your, you know, um, your, your roots and your heritage there now that your mom is, is gone? Well, my mom was one of 10 children. And so I have a ton of cousins, um, obviously aunts and uncles, and I still have family over in Ireland. Um, I have an aunt who has a bed and breakfast, um, not from far from where my mom grew up, she grew up too. Um, and so I still have that connection. I still talk to my aunts, more the aunts. I don't know why, like, you know, the women we all talk. Um, I talk to my aunts often enough. And I have one aunt who is, um, she's the baby of the family. And she tells me all these stories that, you know, I didn't know because when my mom passed away, I was, I was still fairly young. Like I wasn't super young, but I was in my twenties. And you don't really think to ask about some of these stories. Um, so now I speak with my, my aunt and I ask her like, what was mom like when she was young? And, you know, what are stories that you can tell me about what it was like living on the homestead? And um, so I really feel that connection with her and with my other aunts and uncles, but she's the one who like, is always good to, to sit and have a chat and, and tell me all the stories that she knows from when they were little. That's really nice. I have a big, um, big family that's, that's Irish descended as well. And uh, I think there's, there's, there's something, there's something really special about that connection and about um, uh, sort of maintaining the stories. Absolutely. Uh, storytelling is very important in Irish heritage. We're, we're very good for telling stories. And, and that's why I felt really good about, um, about doing this because I want to carry on the stories. I want to not only, you know, craft a, a pattern that's fun to follow, but also has some sort of meaning behind it. Um, and that, um, it just feels like an extra little thing that I can add into my patterns. I've noticed in, in a lot of your patterns, there are cables, there are um, motifs that make me think of some of the traditional things like uh, the, some of the Aran motifs and Celtic knots and things like that. Is, is that a conscious choice on your part? Um, I definitely do think about about that. Like there's, um, growing up, we would wear the, the Aran sweaters um, and so there's several pieces that I have drawn from because of that, because of memories that I had. Um, and I really like texture and I like things to be engaging. So when I can take something from my memory, from my childhood, from my heritage and tie it in to make it a really good experience, it feels like the perfect way that things come together. Uh, that I can tell my story, I can give you a good experience and I can create a piece that's just really going to be so much fun to knit and wear. Now you mentioned giving giving someone a good experience. What does that mean for you as a designer? It actually means a lot of things. Um, as a graphic designer, I have worked in publications for years and so I've worked a lot on readability and on um, creating text that leads you through in a way that you know you know where you're going. Um, it's I'm visually able to break up certain parts so that like you can separate it um, and you don't get lost in a, in a line of, of text. Um, and then, so as well as that, I'm also trying to craft a, um, an experience where you have enough that's kind of easy, but also engaging. And if there's something that feels a little more complex, I'm trying to make it so that you can 
Um, if there's lace, you're not gonna get lost because I'm gonna make sure that the lace is very easy to see, or I'm gonna tell you that you could add markers here because that's gonna make it easier. I want it to be an enjoyable experience that's not stressful because in my mind, like life is stressful enough, your knitting shouldn't be. So yeah, it's just very important to me that it's enjoyable through the process and enjoyable to wear. So um, you mentioned you'd only learned to knit about six years ago. How did you learn to knit? So my daughter took a kid's knitting class. And at the end of it, I said to the teacher, you should probably show me how to do this so that I can help her. And then I never stopped. Like I was back there the next day, you know, learning the next thing. And she just kept leading me um, to the next project, the next project. And the interesting thing is she would not let me knit a scarf to start because she said, you'll get bored. So she taught me a handful of things and then she made me knit a hat. Um, and then because of that, I have a pattern that I created that is to be, um, it's meant to be like either a pattern for knitters that just want like a nice easy hat, but really it's for that beginner knitter you just taught. You know, you have your friend, you taught her how to knit or him how to knit, and now you want to give them a pattern. Um, and so this pattern like explains why are there two needles? When do you do the decreases? What does gauge mean? Like all that kind of stuff. Um, and that was kind of, you know, just my, my payback to be able to give back for, you know, learning this from, uh, from this local yarn store owner. And I remember her saying to me at one point, she's like, you're a good knitter, but one day you're going to be a great knitter. And that just meant so much to me. That's really wonderful. And I saw her the other day and she said, I told her that story. And she said to me, um, she said, you are a great knitter. She said, and you're a great designer too. And like, that was like, you know, just really made my day. So that yarn store is still around? Absolutely. It's a quarter mile down the road. So it's nice to be able to just pop in and, and sit and knit with the, with the local yarn store owner. She's just fabulous. That's wonderful. There was a question in the chat. Someone was asking where you're located. I'm in New Hampshire. I grew up in New York, but I live in New Hampshire now. And it seems like the, the, uh, the Northeast just has such a rich fiber community and, um, and, and sort of support for the fiber arts. It, I live in Northern California and in the San Francisco Bay Area where I am, there are knitters and there are yarn shops, but it, it's not, I think, to the level of that, that you have in places where it's cold. And, you know, I, I wear woolies for fashion and yeah. probably wear them for warmth. <laughs> I wear them for warmth. Absolutely. It is cold here and it is cold for a long time. Um, so I create things and, and I think that is why it's so important to me that it is wearable, um, because probably from October to April, I'm wearing my worried weight mitts. Like it's really chilly. Um, and so I design with a lot of worsted and DK, um, because that's what works. Um, and that's what I find to be usable for me. And I want to be able to show people how I wear it so that they can see that it's very um, useful. But I do create things in lighter weight because, you know, come late April, we're like, get these, you know, heavy things off and we want the lighter, pretty thing. Um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely a necessity. So I know you've, you've published a lot of just, um, accessory design patterns and you recently published your first sweater pattern, right? I did. I did. I was very excited to do that. Um, it's called the round stone and it's a circular yoke um, top down sweater with a little bit of easy lace in the um, in the yoke. And it's it's just it's worsted weight. It's just a nice, easy sweater. Um, the people who have knitted already have really enjoyed it. Um, I tried to make it kind of on brand, you know, that, that it was easy, enjoyable, engaging, and that super wear, it was super wearable. Um, the testers absolutely loved it. And the knitters who've created, who've been working on it and who have created one have really enjoyed it too. 
How was that for you moving from accessory design into sweater design? It was scary. Um, <laughs> there's a lot more steps to it. Um, so I wanted to make sure that it was easy, that I was able to create, um, I think I was able to do nine sizes. Um, I wanted to think about um, the ease of the pattern, but also the wearability, um, which is harder in, in a sweater than it is in a shawl or a cowl or a hat. Um, so I really tried to think of classic lines. I tried to think of um, adding some notes in there where like for me, um, when I knit things, I tend to like them more cropped because of like my, like I tend to wear dresses and stuff, um, but other people like them longer. So I like, I set it to uh, a length that I, that I liked and I thought looked good with the design, but I, you know, I mentioned, this is your sweater. You can make it as short or long as you want. Like, you know what I mean? Trying to think about stuff like that, but still keep it easy. Um, and so that was a really nice way to do a first, first sweater. And now I had a lot of good feedback. So I'm um, planning on doing some more in the, in my next season. Okay, that's great. What else do you have coming up design-wise? Um, I actually have a shawl coming up in, I think it's March 11th that it's coming out on a Friday. And it is called the Letter Mullen Shawl. And it is a DK nice big shawl. Um, and it's written in two sizes. Yeah. Um, and the reasoning behind the shawl was really to be able to highlight. Um, I do a lot of solids and tonals, but this was kind of to highlight the variegated, like, you know, the people who have um, those beautiful, just rich, vibrant colors where the texture that I, I put in some, some of my designs was lost. So this is like a lot of stockinette with some, you know, nice, easy eyelets, um, some garter in the border. And right now my testers are working on some different options where um, they're doing, this is called Nest and it's by Shibui. And so it has this marled look, which is really neat. So I thought you could totally go two, two strands of fingering weight to get a marl where there are different colors. Um, you could go with a DK and put a mohair that's different. You could go with a straight, straight DK that's variegated or you could go with like a tonal. And so it would kind of fit all of those different um, all of those different kind of scenarios. And so my testers right now are absolutely loving it and they're flying through it. And I have one tester who is like the speediest knitter I know. Um, and she's already finished one and has started a second. And I'm like, I can't believe it. So um, it's, it's a really fun knit and uh, it's nice and big. So you can wear it over your shoulders or you could wear it all wrapped up like I do this. And it comes in two sizes. So I'm super excited about this one. What are the two sizes? Um, one is like, 80 by 34 and the others in the 60 some odd by 27 I don't know like something like that but um the interesting thing is it's built off of um the body creates the size so with the first size it would be the two sets of these and then where this would be would be the garter. And then the other one has the three. So it's nice and easy. I'm not making you like have to jump through hoops to figure out what's going on. It's, um, it's very streamlined, so. I think a lot, of, a lot of knitters appreciate having specificity around how to alter patterns. There, there are plenty of knitters out there who can look at something and say, okay, love it. I'm gonna change this. I'm gonna make it bigger or smaller or use more or less yarn or, or do something different. And they know how to do that. But I think there are also just as many knitters out there who um, may not have done that before, who may want a little bit of guidance on, well, if I want, for example, with your sweater, if I want it longer, what part do I lengthen and how do I do that? Absolutely. I think that's very important. Um, and I try and add add in little notes um, and I try and put them, it's important to me, again, that it's easy and, and that it's intuitive. Um, so if there is a note about something, I try and make sure it's right near where you would 
need that information. So you're kind of like, you start to think like, oh, how would I do this? And I go, boop, here's your little note. It'll let you know how to do it. And then you don't have to go too far. Yeah. And that's, you know, since you're, you're self-publishing and, and yes. have you, have you, have you did, been solely self-publishing? I have. Yes. Yeah. So I think that's something that, um, you know, it, it, it can come into play if you're working with a publisher, a magazine, um, a yarn company where they have their ways of doing things. And if you're someone who really believes in having the pattern set up a certain way or instructions in a certain place, then self-publishing is, is, is the place that you can do that, where you can make it be the way you think your knitters want it to be. Absolutely. Um, I just published, this will be my 37th pattern. Um, and I've made a decision at this point that I don't necessarily want to, um, I want to just be self-published because the way that my brain works and the way that my designs work are that I want to get the yarn in my hands and I want to see what it wants to be. And I have a general idea and I want to figure it out. And having to come up with that idea before and fit it into someone else's box is just not the way that my creativity works. Um, and I, I might at, at a later date change my mind. There might be a perfect opportunity where everything comes together just right. But because readability is so important to me, because layout um, with my background is so important to me, I really feel strongly that this is the way that I want to go. Um, and it's worked so far. It's been, um, I'll be having designed for four years in September. Um, so it's going, it's going well so far. So I'm going to keep going with it. That's awesome. So where can people find your patterns? Um, you can find my patterns on my website at erinedesigns.com. Um, everything is centralized there. Um, but I'm also on Ravelry and Payhip as Erinine Designs. I'm on Instagram as Erinine. I'm everywhere as Erinine Designs. Um, <laughs> but yeah, everything would be on my website. So if you wanted to check me out, you can uh, find me there. That's great. It's it's nice to have one uniform name across everything if you can possibly do that. Yeah. It makes it easier for people, I think. Absolutely. That's great. Now, so you mentioned again, your your graphic design background and how that kind of overlaps with I mean, you obviously you use it in your pattern designs and, and in, in your in your layout and and, and putting this out um, but you're also um, you've got something coming up where you're sharing a little bit of that with other designers yes um so i am teaching a class uh, later this week called improve your your pattern layout masterclass um and because of my background because of my um, passionate feelings about pattern layout and the experience it gives to, uh, to knitters, I really want to help other designers to uh, create a better pattern layout. So I have this class going um, through my website on Thursday, um, and I'm going to be teaching other, other designers how to do this. And I'm super excited, and the feedback and the excitement that I've heard is just great. So I have a lot of a lot of people signed up, ready to uh, to learn more, so that they can help the, the knitters have a better experience. That's fantastic. And so, with the, the past two years being what they are, um, and we've all been, you know, more or less degrees of of you know sitting in our own little offices on our Zoom boxes. <laughs> um, how do you reach out and connect? How do you make those connections with other designers? So I'm involved in a lot of communities um, with other designers, which has just been fabulous. Um, and I really try and connect with them and, you know, do Zoom or do DMs on Instagram and just check in with people and make those connections because it is hard. Um, we're just not really able to see people. Um, it's getting a little bit better, but, but you know, this is, this is going to be around for a while. So having these other ways to know that you can still keep that connection has been great. Um, I, and I, I have like weekly night nights with people and um, I have a Patreon and we do monthly knit nights on there, which is really nice. Um, so yeah, just trying to connect wherever I can um, and stay 
and stay up with, with what other people are doing and promote other designers because that's important to me um, that like I am a good friend, not only to the knitters, but also to the designers. Yeah, well, and you know, we did some some collaboration back last year where where I, I felt like you were very generous with your time and your talents. Um, Aaron and I were part of the um, putting, we, we put, we were two of eight designers that participated in the Quiet Forest collection, which was a collection of uh, knit accessories and crochet accessories that was released back in October of 2021. And Aaron provided the layout um, for all the patterns in that collection. And I thought you did, a, you did a, a fabulous job. They looked beautiful. Thank you very much. I and was glad it, to be able to do it. it you know, the, that's those sort of um, collaborations can really be, they, they can be really a nice learning experiences and they, it, it can be nice to be part of a group where, where we're helping each other and not everyone who participated was, had done it before, which was kind of interesting. Yeah. You know, some folks who were publishing their first design there. Yes. And, and, and some, fun. sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, and it was fun to be able to, to explain things to them and to let them know, like, kind of how the process went. Um, um, because I feel like the two of us have been doing this for a while now. So, you know, we had kind of gotten used to it. So being able to, to share it with kind of the next generation has been nice. Yeah. And, and also there were folks who really brought different kinds of experiences because there were folks, I, I am thinking of someone who had published with magazines before, but never self-published. Yes. So that was a first, um, and, and really interesting bringing different, different talents and different levels of experience together. Absolutely. So what are some of your favorite, um, some of your favorite things to participate in, in the knitting community? Um, so each year I have been doing a knit along with the main yarn crews um, and that has been so much fun. Um, so this coming year will be the fourth year I'll, I'll be doing that. Um, I did it, um, the first year I did it, I did a mystery knit along um, and we had a ton of people doing that. Um, and then in 2020, we did it virtually because no one was going anywhere, but we were able to like um, keep connected, which was really nice. And then last year um, we did it again. And it just, it was so nice to have that connection with all these people who are not very far from me. Like um, I'm right near the main border. So uh, the first year I was able to do a bunch of meet and greets and do trunk shows and stuff like that. So we're hoping that at some point soon, um, when things get a little bit more settled, that I can actually get out and, and meet some of the knitters again, um, because that has just been so much fun. That would be really nice, I'm sure. It is. Yeah. And yet I think, you know, I really admire how so many people in the knitting industry have found the way to bridge the gap, you know, between the virtual and the in-person and, and yeah. to pivot when, when things needed to pivot or, or to do yeah. things in different ways. In that, in that. Absolutely. And that has been nice. Um, you know, that's where the, you know, the Patreon um, knit nights had come from. I had in-person knit nights that switched to uh, virtual once, you know, everything started happening. Um, and I think that it really makes us stretch and think about how we can transfer the experience that we would have in person to a more virtual way. And it's never gonna be exactly the same, but you still get that connection and that's what's important. So tell me a little bit more about your Patreon. So I, yes, I love my Patreon. I love my, my patrons, they're wonderful. Um, so I have three different levels. Um, my first level, we have a little Discord community, which is fantastic. I don't know if you've played with Discord that much, but I'm absolutely loving it. Um, so we have, you know, little, little chat, you know, questions in there and people are talking. Um, and then I have my, my next level up is um, I have in two posts each month. One is on what I'm working on and it talks about things that I'm working on like months in advance. So you see my thought process as I'm picking out yarn, what I'm gonna work on, what my 
you know, um, I have a new shawl coming up and I talk about like, okay, here's the yarn. This is what I'm thinking. And then next month you'll start to see like, okay, here's my swatch and here's where it went. Um, and people have really been enjoying that, being able to see kind of like the inside, the inner workings of how it, how it goes. Um, and then I also, I'm a super curious person. So I have a post each month that talks about all the things that are inspiring me. It's like things I'm cooking, things I'm reading, things that, um, I'm watching or um, interesting videos I saw, stuff to do with knitting. Um, so I put that out and it feels like my own little mini magazine each month with just like little bits of information. Um, and then my top level, uh, they get whatever pattern comes out that month for free. And then we have our Patreon knit night. And um, it's just an, a lovely little community and we really enjoy spending time together. That's really and I've, I've had that. Thank you. I had, I started it just before um, COVID hit, <laughs> which was perfect timing. Yeah. Yeah. And then you had it there. Yes, I did. It's fantastic. So someone had a question in the chat. Are you going to be doing any trunk shows this year? So I don't, I don't know. It depends on what happens with um, everything that's going on with COVID. Um, but I recently talked to one of the yarn stores in Maine who was like, we're hoping to see you soon. Um, so if, if things are safe, then I probably will do a trunk show there, but I don't have anything on the books just yet. So I know you are a big planner and you tend to, uh, plan your designs well in advance, don't you? I definitely do. Um, I am a person who just, I like to understand things and I like to look at things from above. So I plan my year, um, usually in an afternoon. And so I figure out like the balance of things. I look back at my previous year and figure out, um, what do people like? What was it about that experience that, that they liked so that I can try and recreate the experience in another piece that would be similar, but you know, different. Um, and so I like, I figure out my year and I usually have my designs done probably a couple months in advance and then they just wait to be released. Um, but I, I plan out usually, I like if I do a big shawl, then I try to do something smaller the next month. So that way, if you're still working on that big shawl and you want a little something different, I have something for you. Um, and I'm not hitting you with one big shawl after another big shawl. So yeah, I love to plan things out. And I actually have a class that I teach called Plan Your Year. Um, and it's a workbook and a video lesson. So I help other designers with that. And that has been uh, really great too. I really like that kind of aspect of designing, but also helping other people to think about the questions that are gonna help them to create a plan that's really gonna work for them um, and create cohesiveness and create ease so that they can um, really play with their designs. So how long do you tend to spend working on a design from inception till it's ready, even if it's not launched, but from you know, kind of the idea stage to to have everything ready to go? I'd say about three months, but, but I usually have several designs going at the same time. Mm -hmm. So my happy place is having three designs um, kind of going at the same time. I'll have one that is just about to um, be released. I'll have another one that's about to go to the tech editor and then I'll have one that's really in the beginning stages. Um, any more than that, and it gets overwhelming, any less than that, and I end up behind. Because I'm releasing probably, um, I like to do about 11 designs a year. Um, I find that the summer is not a great time um, for me to release because I have a lot of people um, in the US. And so in the summer, they're tending to do other things. So I tend to release um, January through probably May, early June, and then back again in August through December. Um, and so that's the way I kind of, I kind of think of it. And so I'd rather um, have those things ready when people are ready for them. That makes a lot of sense. 
And I spend my summer working with the main yarn crews. So um, I'll do a knit along with them. Um, there's a lot of interaction between the store, I'm hoping to go back and do some, some trunk shows and stuff. So I kind of leave that open both for planning and for connecting with people. Sure, that makes sense. So um, when you talk about this knit along, what is that like? Um, so we do it every summer and it's usually like there's, um, there are the, this one runs on Ravelry because it's what works for them. Um, and so we have a, um, a forum and we chat and there's usually, um, prizes each week and there's a big prize at the end and we just have a lot of fun with it, but we usually choose, um, one pattern. Last year I did, uh, it was a pattern I had released in April called the Dairy Rush Shawl. And so um, everyone was doing that. And then um, we were just knitting along. It's, you know, what's funny is someone told me that they, their toddler loved their shawl so much that she wanted her own. And so this woman emailed me back and forth and we talked about it and she figured out how to kind of shrink it down. And she created a toddler size Dairy Rush Shawl for Christmas for her little girl and she was thrilled with it. So it, it was just, it was a lot of fun. Um, and we just chat back and forth, a lot of engagement, um, a lot of people in the stores going in and um, a lot of the stores had done samples. So because they could go in last summer, it was late summer that they, they kind of pushed it forward um, and they were able to see the different ones. And it just was a lot of fun. A lot of um, just connecting with people. That's wonderful. Yeah. Have, I, I love that story of the, the, the knitter that reached out for your help in, in resizing that shawl uh, for her toddler. Have you had other times when knitters have reached out in the course of, of working your patterns that have been particularly memorable? Well, there was one woman who had done the Dairy Rush shawl again and um, she wanted to do it in lace. And so we went back and forth with like, how was she going to do that? And she ended up deciding to, um, to do it on the same needles as we were doing the fingering weight so that it was like very airy. Oh my gosh, it was the most beautiful thing. It was so pretty. Um, it was this like gradient, um, super airy. And the pictures just made me like, they just choked me up. It was, it was beautiful to see it the things that you design in a different way that you didn't even, you didn't even think that it could be possible. You know what I mean? Um, that's what I love about designing is that I have something in mind and I create it and I try and write it in a way that's easy for everyone else, but then people take it and they make it their own and it's equally beautiful in all the different ways that it's made. So it's just, it's just really a wonderful thing. I think it's really tr phenomenally interesting to get to see how someone else translates something that that I envisioned, or so, you know, or or and, and and there's there's both, right? I, you see this and you say, "Wow, I never would have put those colors together," or you know, they made a change that's just lovely. Um, yes. And then once in a while, I'll see someone that has made it in the exact colors and yarn that I did, and I think wait, is that mine? I didn't take that picture. I do a double take. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. I definitely have that too. Um, it, it's a fun thing, I think, sometimes to, um, to, you know, to open up a social media page or, uh, you know, something online and and see something of yours and especially when you're not expecting it you know that's or some maybe somebody you have a notification somebody tagged you and and there it is and maybe it's someone you didn't even know or you you had no awareness that that, that they were doing this and there's a beautiful finished product absolutely so there's a question in the chat asking if there are any specific designers that you follow that is a hard question because there's so many. Um, there's actually one right in here called, her name is Brenda, Brenda Shack, and um, she is someone that I've known since I started uh, started designing, and she's a fabulous designer, Bren JS Knits. 
Um, there's someone that I've really been enjoying. Hi, Brenda. Um, there's someone who I've really been enjoying. Um, I think it's called Bloom Handmade. And she's been doing this really cool stuff lately with like embroidering on her knitting and very sashiko. Is that how you say it? Mm -hmm. Like it's that kind of feel with blue and white. And like, I watch her and I'm just blown away. Um, and there's another woman um, who does beautiful socks called Stone Knits. And she's just a lovely human being. Um, and then there's a bunch of just smaller designers like myself who I have connections with and I just keep up on what they're doing. Um, <laughs> good Kim, good Kim. Um, there's uh, Under the Olive Tree Knits does beautiful shawls. Um, she does really, really nice shawls. There's a lot of like one skein um, or two skein shawls, uh, really pretty stuff. Um, Northwood Knits. Brenda, is that Carly, Northwood Knits? Yeah, she does really great socks and she just did a brioche hat. Um, that's a very good beginner uh, project. Yeah, there's just so many wonderful designers out there. Um, I love the big designers, but I also like to get to know some of the some of the smaller designers and really spread the love around. How do you find, do you find time to knit other people's designs when you're busy, you know, no. creating examples for yourself? No, I, I would love to more. Uh, once in a great while, I will knit a small thing. I can never seem to commit, although I should say this is um, Jennifer Steingass. Um, and I don't remember which one it is right now. And I steaked it, it was my first steak and I absolutely love it. Um, but other than that, it's like a hat or a cowl or something like that. Um, and so, and, but there's a, there's a woman's hat that I've knit probably five times and it's called the East Lake Lamb Hat and it's by Sam Lamb. It is just the perfect amount. It's got some color work with these cute little lambs on it, um, but it's like stuck in it. Other than that, so it's a great kind of when I don't have the brain power to do much else and I just wanna play a little and have something in my hands, it's the perfect thing, but I literally have knit so many of them. Um, yeah, and uh, baby knits. I don't design baby knits, so if I need them, that's a great small project. And someone's asking in the chat, do you have a fantasy knit project? Mm, I don't know. I mean, I really feel like my fantasy knit projects turn into my designs um, because once I have only two designs in my hands, then I start dreaming about my next design um, and those become my fantasies. Um, I usually come up with designs from seeing a yarn that takes my breath away and I can't wait to work with. And so I'll reach out to the designer and say, um, or I'll reach out to the yarn dyer and say, would you like to collaborate? Um, and then I tell them kind of the concept of what I have in mind. And then I get it into my hands and I start to play with it and try and really make that yarn sing. So that's kind of where my my brain goes with, with my fantasy knitting. What are some of your favorite yarns to work with? Mm, that's a hard one because there's so many. Um, I recently did two cowls, one in December and one in February with Shibui. Um, and it was a combination of Haven and Silk Cloud. And it is seriously like, like a cloud. It is just so soft and luxurious. Um, and I absolutely love that. Um, and then there's some yarns that I just really like the dyers and the way they handle color and then the people themselves, because that makes it extra special. Um, I'm currently designing um, this, which will come out in March, um, and it's a cowl, and this is in Jillian Kittle's yarn, um, who is, she's in Rhode Island, so not far from me, and her colors are just beautiful, and she is one of the loveliest human beings, um, 
And then one of the other ones I'd say is, so that's on the kind of like indie dyer. Um, but I've been working with Universal Yarn who has this really wonderful rustic, it's not rustic, but it's like, it's a natural wool um, and it's really affordable. It's deluxe worsted. It's what my sweater was knit in. Um, I do a lot of color work in that. Um, and it just, you know, when you're splurging on the shibui knits, you need to balance with some other stuff. So I love being able to have that yarn that has a million colors. Um, it's uh, not, it's on the East Coast. They're down in uh, North Carolina. Um, they're another wonderful company and it's just a really nice yarn and a nice company. And that's important to me too. Like I want to not only like the yarn, but really like the people behind it. And it can be hard to, to know the people behind the yarn for most yes. knitters. Yeah. They don't have the experience of, of getting to know, and, and maybe unless you're going to shows yes. and, 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 and there are folks, small people, you know, small dyers, or small producers who are there at the show and you get to meet them yeah. and talk to them. But if it's something that's on the shelf at the yarn store, most knitters don't get to have that connection with the yarn producers in, in the way that you might get to have. Well, and isn't it nice that as designers, we can share with knitters that we can share like that connection of um, this person makes beautiful colors, but they also are really, really great person. And um, I just love being able to do that. Yeah, that, that's absolutely true. I, I've had, I've been so very blessed to get to work with some specific independent dyers and small producers of yarn and do through different collaborations. And it's wonderful. Sometimes it's me discovering the yarn for the first time. Yeah. Or sometimes it's, you know, I've met someone at a show, we got to talking, we became friendly. Um, and then and then something comes of that, or one of us is inspired by the other. Yeah. And we and we can do this work together. And yeah, I think it's I think that's a side of the whole design process and the side of the business that a lot of knitters unfortunately don't get to see. And I and I think it is really nice when the story of the design can touch on the story of that relationship too. Absolutely. And I really try and make sure that I do that. Like one of the things um, when I work with a company is I'm letting my knitters know about that company and about what I think of the yarn. And um, I'm only working with companies that I believe in. Um, the Dairy Rush shawl was designed in a natural, naturally dyed yarn from uh, one of the Carolinas. And it was a company called the Noble Thread. Um, and her colors are absolutely stunning. Um, and she was, again, another really great person. Um, and then the yarn that I'm just, designing my next shawl, which is after this one's done, um, is from a company out in California, A-N-A-D-A, -A -A, I don't know how to pronounce it, Anada um, Yarns, and she does naturally dyed and her colors are just stunning. And so I've been watching her for quite a while um, and was thrilled to be able to collaborate with her um, and put together a fingering weight shawl that'll come out in April. And I think you and I have both um, done designs in the past, I don't know, maybe six months or, or, or a little bit more um, th for a, um, a, a mill that's closer to you, the Jagger Spun. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, I did one in September called the Letter More Shawl. Um, and it was in Zephyr yarn, which is 50% silk and 50% wool. And man, is this thing beautiful. Um, the drape on it was just gorgeous. Um, and it's funny because I wear it, it's cold here. We talked about that. Yeah. So every morning when I get up, um, the heat has fallen over the, over the night and I have to go and turn it up so that it warms up, but I'll get out of bed and I'll put on my slippers and I'll put on my shawl, which is actually right here. Um, and it's huge and drapey and beautiful. And let me get it right side up. Um, but yeah, it's just so cozy. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just, I absolutely love it. So yeah, this yarn is gorgeous. And I was excited to see that you had used, um, you had worked with them as well. I did. Yeah, absolutely. 
Um, this was the powder bowl cowl that I released just last month. And this is done Beautiful. in their um, three, three colors of their worsted weight. And, and it's their, it's their, um, there's no silk in it. It's it's their uh, wonderful merino base, and um, it's soft and it's cozy. And I loved working with it. I love it. it this was a fantastic yarn for color work. That's awesome. And, um, I have hopes to do a follow on, um, because again in, in some color work because yeah, it was it was really wonderful to work with, and they were wonderful yeah. to work with. And yes. You know, and as you say, you know, when you when you find that relationship, you find that company, you find that yarn, you know, you, you want to go back there again. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And it, it makes it it makes it easy. Um, and the thing I like about them, too, is they are local to me, but also they, again, have beautiful colors because for me, because I want it to be wearable, it needs to fit into my wardrobe um, and the thing about my samples is I create them in ways that when I go to trunk shows, I can wear them. I can show people how um, I can have a base dress and I can switch out things and I can have it fit, you know, and that makes it so much easier because if you're going to put all this time into things, then you want to be able to wear it. Um, and so uh, I love that they have so many colors. Um, and just beautiful yarn. So yeah. they have they have beautiful colors and a lot of different, as you say, you know, they've they've got a lot of, of a wide variety of different yarns. So for different applications. Absolutely. And nice company. And um, there's another question in the chat asking, Ooh. are you more drawn to the colors or to the fiber? Colors, I have to say. Um, because if the if the color doesn't work, then it's not gonna work to be wearable. Um, so I'd find the color first and then I'd find the fiber that worked for um, what I was looking for. Hmm. Because a lot of the times there'll be colors and there'll be different faces. Um, I mean, I always love on a shawl if I can have a little bit of silk or cashmere or something in it, um, but really color is key for me. This is my favorite color of all time. Like I would, I would knit shawls every day in this color. Um, it's just my happy place. Um, but I do mix it up so that you guys can keep them separated. Yes, I love gold too, Kim. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, I just wanted to encourage folks if you've got other questions and you want to put them, pop them in the chat, or if you'd like to unmute and ask them out loud, this is the time. Gold and I'd say um, my favorite colors are gold and red. Um, and I really like blue. Um, so I tend to pick two of those. Like this sweater was perfect because it's got the gold, it's got the brown, which kind of grounds everything, goes with my hair. Um, but it's got this little pop of red. It's got a little bit of an olive green. So I can still wear this with it, but I can wear like I have uh, my Clifton shawl is red. I could wear that with it. Um, and then I have like cream colored shawls. Um, I have like, I think uh, my Arbo shawl is um, kind of like a beigey kind of color. So that still goes with it. Um, so I try and think of those base layers that then I can, you know, make myself like a little Barbie doll and take things off and put them on and <laughs> have fun with it. Oh yeah. She's so impressed that my dog hasn't what? some comments about that your dog hasn't moved <laughs> oh yes it's uh it's eight o'clock here so he's like mom it's time to go to sleep <laughs> fantastic um well what else should we be looking for from you Erin what else do you have coming up that we should be on the lookout for um I have the I'll have a cow this summer um, with the main yarn cruise. And I will be talking about that on social media. Um, so you can sign up for that. Um, I have the letter mullen shawl that's coming out um, in the beginning of March. And then I have this Inish Turk cowl that's coming out later. And then the shawl that I was talking about will be in April. Um, I'll have a shawl in April and a shawl in May. I have, if you go to my website, you can sign up for my newsletter. 
Um, it's the only place that I have um, discounts. Um, so if you sign up for that, you'll get discounts to the patterns and you'll, you'll know what's coming out. Um, I do have garments planned. I see Brenda's asking, do I have garments planned for the future? Yes, I'm thinking about um, a tea. I'm thinking possibly of doing the round stone in a tea. Um, and then I really wanna do a cardigan because I wear cardigans. I find that they're really versatile with, um, with dresses and I only wear dresses. So um, I did the first one as a pullover so that it was versatile for everyone. But I kind of want to make sure I'm doing stuff for people like me who don't really wear pullovers that much. Um, so that's definitely going to be planned into my next year. I do my design year from August through May. So um, I'm just finishing up my design year now. And then once I get um, my last, probably my last two on my needles, I'll start to be planning for the fall. And I definitely want to include some more garments. Um, if people want them, you know, I'm, if people really just want accessories, they love my shawls, they love my cowls and my hats, um, then I'll keep doing those. Um, but if I keep having people be interested in more uh, garments from me, then I definitely will add those in. I really look forward to seeing those as they come out. Thank you. I'm so excited. Thanks. And Got a lot going on in here and I want to share it with people. Wonderful. Well, Erin, thank you so much for joining me today. I know everyone can get can find you as Erinine Designs everywhere. Yep. And if they're looking for me, they can find me as Devious Knitter everywhere. My website is deviousknitter.com and I'm Devious Knitter on Instagram and Twitter and all the different places. And um, I hope folks will come back and check for next month's guest. I cannot announce yet who it is, but we do what wouldn't it be fun once a month here on youtube live and live on zoom so follow me or follow the podcast wouldn't it be fun on instagram so that you don't miss the announcement of next month's guest and hopefully we'll see you all back at that time i'm going to stop our recording and say goodbye to everyone who's watching us you. on youtube live <laughs>